In this video, I examine the claim that hybrid and battery electric vehicles aren't very green because of all the greenhouse gas emissions produced in their manufacture and in their disposal. A new research paper by scientists from the University of Michigan and Ford Motor Company shows quite convincingly that this claim is just another climate myth. Woody et al. carried out a very careful analysis of all the greenhouse gas emissions produced by internal combustion engine, hybrid electric, and battery electric vehicles. They looked at all the emissions produced in the manufacturing process, including the emissions associated with producing the lithium ion batteries used in hybrid and full electric vehicles, the actual operation of the vehicles, and in the final disposal of the vehicles, basically a cradle to grave analysis of greenhouse gas emissions. Figure one from their paper shown here compares the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the production and disposal of the vehicles, but not the actual operation of the vehicles. The lithium ion batteries used in hybrid vehicles are quite small compared to those used in fully electric vehicles. And as you can see, there is very little difference in emissions from hybrids and from internal combustion engine vehicles. The lithium ion batteries used in plug-in hybrids are a little bigger than those used in regular hybrids, but still, are, still add only slightly to their total emissions. However, the batteries used in EVs must be very large to give them a reasonable range, say 250 miles or so. And as you can see from the figure, the emissions produced in the manufacture and disposal of an EV are about 80% greater than those from internal combustion and hybrid vehicles. EVs produce zero greenhouse gas emissions when they are being driven. So the real question is, are the greenhouse gas emissions produced to charge their batteries low enough to compensate for the extra emissions produced in their manufacture and disposal. The analysis by Woody et al. was more detailed than just about any other life cycle analysis that I have seen. They examined just about every factor affecting greenhouse gas emissions, including things like the mix of fuel sources used to produce electricity to charge EVs, weather conditions that affected mileage, and city versus highway driving patterns in every county in the contiguous 48 states. These figures are based on averages over all the counties in the continuous 48 states. The upper figure compares the total greenhouse gas emissions from battery electric vehicles, the dark lines, to those from internal combustion vehicles, light lines, for sedans, SUVs, and pickup trucks as a function of the total number of miles driven. The results are quite remarkable. The total greenhouse gas emissions from electric vehicles are so low then that when they have been driven about 20,000 miles, they already have compensated for the extra emissions produced in manufacture and disposal. The lower figure makes the same comparison between EVs and hybrid vehicles. Now, hybrid vehicles are 20 to 40% more efficient than internal combustion engine vehicles, so it takes a bit longer, about 30,000 miles for the crossover point where EVs begin to produce fewer total emissions than hybrids. This figure shows the lifetime cradle to grave greenhouse gas emissions per mile driven for pickup trucks, SUVs, and sedans averaged over all the counties in the lower 48 states for internal combustion engine vehicles, hybrid vehicles, and battery electric vehicles. The results are remarkably surprising. A gas-powered sedan emits on average 244 more grams per mile of greenhouse gases than an EV sedan. 
a gas-powered SUV emits 273 more grams per mile of greenhouse gases than an EV SUV, and a gas-powered pickup truck produces a whopping 361 more grams per mile of greenhouse gases than an EV pickup truck. In other words, the heavier the vehicle, the bigger the reduction in emissions by EVs. Now, a savings of 361 grams per mile might not sound like that big a deal, but if you drive a pickup truck 180,000 miles over its lifetime, that adds up to a reduction in emissions of 65 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions if it's an EV pickup. For those of you who think in English units, that's equivalent to 72 tons less greenhouse gas emission for the EV pickup truck over its lifetime. In comparison, there is a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions of 44 metric tons for the EV sedan over the gas-powered sedan. The reason that the emission savings are greater for the pickup truck than the sedan is the inherent inefficiency of gasoline-powered internal combustion engines. These engines produce relatively little torque at low speeds. So the heavier the vehicle, the bigger the internal combustion engine must be to provide the necessary acceleration and stop and go driving. While gas, gasoline powered, uh, pardon me, while gasoline powered sedans typically get around 30 to 35 miles per gallon, full size pickup trucks only get around 15 miles per gallon. This figure shows county level data for greenhouse gas emissions in the 3,108 counties in the contiguous 48 states. There are exactly zero counties in which a gasoline powered vehicle produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions than either an EV or a hybrid. There are a few counties where a hybrid vehicle produces fewer greenhouse gas emissions than an EV. But overall, EVs are the best choice for emission reduction in more than 98% of the counties in the lower 48. This reflects the extent to which the electric grid has become greener in the past decade or so, with less, with less electricity being generated from coal and more being generated from renewables and, and natural gas. The analysis by Woody et al. does not consider vehicle cost. Now, at one time, Hybrid vehicles and EVs were considerably more expensive than their gasoline-powered counterparts, but now the price difference between hybrid and internal combustion engine versions of the same vehicle has become quite small, and there are many more reasonably priced EVs on the market. Check Consumer Reports for the details. And with the recent sharp increases in gasoline prices, hybrids and EVs have become much more competitive in overall cost. I hope you have found this video interesting and informative. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have in the comments section. I'll, I will do my best to answer them. And if you haven't already done so, I would appreciate it greatly if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on my picture in the circle below to subscribe.